A labyrinth is commonly used for walking meditations, walking slowly into a center and back out again to clear one's mind, a spiritual reflective activity. A labyrinth can be represented both symbolically and physically. It's seen in art, as designs in pottery, baskets and coins, as body art, etched on walls of caves, even as finger labyrinths, but especially on the floor and ground. A labyrinth is a dance. The earliest known labyrinth design comes from the Greek-owned island of Crete, found in the prehistoric palace of Knossos. Somehow prehistory merged with history by way of myth. Knossos. In Greek mythology, the labyrinth was an elaborate structure designed and built by the legendary Daedalus. He built it for King Minos of Crete at Knossos to hold a horrible monster, the Minotaur, a creature that was half man and half bull. Daedalus had made the labyrinth so cunningly that he himself could barely escape it after he built it. It was probably a maze, really, not a true labyrinth. Then along came the Athenian Theseus, who killed the Minotaur a Roman mosaic from Switzerland. Theseus became a hero for his brave deed. He became king of Athens. This painted on a Roman pot. He had been helped by Ariadne in the upper left and the inner circle, who provided him with a fateful thread, literally the clue, to wind his way in and back out again. Coins were found at Knossos with both square and circular versions of the Cretan labyrinth. Greek letters here. Clay tables from Greece, too, show a similar labyrinth. But this round version is now generally seen as the standard Cretan labyrinth, with seven circuits around, seven paths. As a modern fantasy with a minotaur, this botanical garden in Vancouver, Canada has a Cretan labyrinth cut into the lawn. The one who photographed it and posted it on the internet wrote this, how fine to have a lawn and cut such a creation into it. I slowly trod my way in from the entrance, span around at the center and wound my way out again. A minotaur holds a hair, a rabbit sculpture. Hares get a bad re reputation in storytelling, he writes. Swift as they are, they don't even get to beat a tortoise. It's grand to see a hare, given a moment of due respect. It's at the University of British, British Columbia. The term labyrinth is often confused with maze, which is a walking puzzle in the form of a complex branching passage with various choices of path and direction. An internet maze. The maze at the St. Louis Botanical Garden is a very lovely place, but there are many tricks, turns, and dead ends. Modern mazes to watch out for. A labyrinth, however, has just one way in and the same way out. No tricky turns to get confused by, so it can be walked with an open heart and mind with no need to rush. A typical walk may take a half an hour or so. A single path labyrinth has an unambiguous through route to the center and back. It is not designed to be difficult to navigate. Here is a Hindu form of labyrinth with a spiral in its center seen as a threefold seed pattern. The inner spiral is the seed with two spiraling patterns at each side. The path here is white. And this is said to be the troop formation employed at the Battle of Kurukshetra as recounted in the Hindu epic, the Mahabharata. A very similar one is from Neolithic India near Goa. 
on the coast, carved in stone possibly up to 4,000 years ago. Nothing is known about it. The Romans developed quite a diversity of labyrinths as mosaics and floors throughout the greater Roman Empire. And other forms were engraved or painted onto walls in Scandinavia. A small labyrinth pattern cut into the cliff face in Tintagel, Cornwall, England. Following the Romans, the medieval Jews and Christians became labyrinth makers as well. This is a mythic map of Jericho in a 14th century Hebrew Bible. Jericho. The greatest classical medieval labyrinth is a 11 circuit one, that is 11 paths around the center, called Chart style. The earliest one known was small, cut into a stone on the portico or porch of the Cathedral of San Martino in Italy at Lucca, Tuscany. This has just a simple circle in the center. The Latin inscription that we see on the right says, This is the labyrinth built by Dedalus of Crete. All who entered therein were lost, except Theseus, thanks to the threat of Ariadne. Of course, we know now that the Cretan design may have been a seventh circuit, but was a mysterious maze. The most famous of all labyrinths was designed in a stone floor to walk on in Chartres Cathedral, just west of Paris, France. And so the name of this 11 circuit style comes from Chartres. Begun about 1200, this one has a six petal rose design in the center, symbolizing the Virgin Mary. Often it's just called the medieval type of labyrinth. The same design in a Trappist Abbey of Our Lady of saint Rame in Belgium. And in San Francisco, the Grace Episcopal Cathedral, the Chartres style. Here's an octagon-shaped one, the New Jerusalem Labyrinth, in the Basilica of St. Quentin, in the far north of France. Begun about the same time as Chartres in 1200, this basilica took 300 years to complete. The cathedral was designed to be so resplendent as to remind one of the New Jerusalem, or mythic celestial city. Of course, it's symbolic. To build the New Jerusalem was the goal, the body of direct consciousness of the divine, and this applied specifically to the labyrinth. But in the Seven Circuit Cretan Labyrinth, one walks along seven arcs and makes eight turns on the path before reaching the center. This seven-course classical design was widespread in depictions of the Minotaur's Labyrinth. These representations are common throughout the world, but are generally constructed on the ground so they may be walked. This is in Canada, All Saints Anglican Church, Ottawa. Here's a five-circuit one done in a stone pavement in Germany, in Mingelsheim, a tool for spiritual navigation around these symbolic white paths into the center while reflecting, concentrating, praying. Stone pavement again, but in the Chartres style, outside at a seminary in Hong Kong to regain one's center in the midst of the city's tensions. Another kind using pavement stones in South Africa at the old University of Fort Hare in Alice, Eastern Cape. In cement in North Carolina, the Millbrook Baptist Church at Raleigh. And various stones here. Carefully laid stones above ground here in Southwest Germany, Alsenborn area, used in healing. In northwest Wisconsin, the Sacred Grove Labyrinth in a forest retreat near Webster. Glacier rounded bowl boulders, sawdust pathways. In California, 
at a music retreat in the Garden Valley. The Abode of Peace Retreat Center Labyrinth, 123 feet in diameter. Small stones placed right on the grassy turf near Sacramento. In Taos, New Mexico, very rough natural stones. In Michigan, at Llama Meadows Farm in Benzonia, northwest area of Lower Michigan, boulders rounded by the glaciers. In Arizona, the Triangle T Guest Ranch Labyrinth, on land sacred to the Apache and Hohokam Native American tribes, located in Dragoon, southeast Arizona. Rough stones again. In Queens, New York, in Kew Gardens, Maple Grove Cemetery, rounded glacier stones. The Grace Field Labyrinth in Quebec Province, Canada. 24 inch paths they are cut of stone dust with dividing lines made from rocks found on the Grace Field Camp property. A small one here in Maryland near the Atlantic coast, only seven feet across, made of bricks and pea gravel. This is called the Raven's Labyrinth. A bigger one in Maryland at the Prince of Peace Presbyterian Church in Crofton, near the Chesapeake Bay. Here are paving bricks on top of mulch, which interlocked and give smooth lines. In British Columbia on the Pacific Coast, stones at White Rocks East Beach, near a tidal flat. Drawn in the sand in California, at Stone Steps Beach in Lucadia north of San Diego, as the tide comes in. Possibly a very transforming experience in concentrated walking and prayer as the waters slowly consume the design. And in logs in the south of England, the log prayer labyrinth at Our Lady of England Priory in Storrington, West Sussex. This brings us to turf labyrinth which began in England, turf labyrinths. The city of Troy is called a roadside turf labyrinth in the Howardian Hills of Yorkshire in the north. These are sometimes called turf scraped labyrinths as the turf or the sod has been scraped away for walking on. This has flowering daisies in Wing, Rutland, central England. In the fall, turf with leaves. This has a bench to sit on under a tree once you have reached the center. In suburban Maryland, a weed whacked turf labyrinth. This could be done with a lawnmower too, a good way to test a design before getting it into a more permanent one. Weed whacking. Planting bulbs in Connecticut for a flower labyrinth. They planted about 800 daffodils in about two and a half hours. A good result in New York. Daff daffodils, Narcissus. This is at Cornell University's Department of Horticulture. In eastern Ontario, Canada, done with pebbles, grass, flowers, and water. The Tai Chi Labyrinth and Garden in Lancaster Heights is here a metaphor for our minds, for our lives. But we must remember that once a turf labyrinth is built, it requires maintenance. In a North American climate, for example, careful weeding must be done at least twice a year, and it may take a full day each time, as this one did. In Germany, a public hedge labyrinth, it's at a park in northern Bavaria curving hedge, labyrinth in German. And in Italy, very angular, just west of Venice, a labyrintho in Italian. At sunset, a labyrinth in Prairie du Sac in south central Wisconsin, 
with lots of beautiful stones and statues representing many traditions of spirituality. And in the winter. And quite ephemeral, a snow labyrinth in Marlboro, Connecticut. And even more temporary, of waste paper, an office paper labyrinth created in an hour with five circuits, Maryland. Finally, many labyrinths have been drawn or painted on cloth or carpets. This is in London, the Rosslyn Hill Unitarian Chapel, with a chart style design. In Akron, Ohio, the seven circuit design with seven colors, called a chakra labyrinth, representing the seven chakras, energy centers of the body. In Canada, a carpet with candles, the Southminster Steinhauer United Church in Edmonton, Alberta. Although ideally, a labyrinth is attractive to the individual for meditation, there may be others walking it at the same time. In Santa Fe, New Mexico, a second grade school project was done at Pablo Roybal Elementary School. They researched, planned, and built a labyrinth model on the Chartres Cathedral. And they walked it maybe not so meditative for adults along with lots of second graders. Some thoughts now by several modern writers about using a labyrinth by Reverend Lauren Artris, Dan Williams Jr., and Lucy Bassler. These are some pictures of a labyrinth at the Van Voody Conference Center in North Holland, Netherlands. In walking the labyrinth, it may be symbolic of one's path in life. We are not just human beings on a spiritual path, we are spiritual beings on a very human path. The road of life twists and turns and no two directions are ever the same. Let our lessons come from the journey, not from the destination. Walking the labyrinth is a meditative experience and can be used for slowing down your life or for gaining clarity to help make right decisions. Some are calmed and some are energized. It's unique to each person, but it is a tool to help one delve deeper inside themselves. Oroville is the site of a recently designed and constructed Cretan labyrinth, supported in large part by Oroville International USA. With funding promised, Oroville's beautiful botanical gardens was proposed as the best site, as it was seen as a flower-bordered type of labyrinth. It was enthusiastically accepted by the garden staff. It would be just next to their already existing maze, labeled here on the map as a labyrinth by mistake. In February 2014, the site was available but greatly overgrown with unwanted bushes and weeds. It was soon cleared and brush burned, and red laterite soil was brought in to cover the entire area and raise it up. The garden team laid it out first in the computer, and it was decided to add four trees at the four turning points in the labyrinth. The two near the center would provide some shade for people sitting and meditating there. Then the marking began on the red earth, using white chalk. Straight lines and arcs were carefully delineated for wide pathways of red soil and raised flower beds with fertile soil between them. The center, it was decided, would be a round sunken pit, large enough for several people to sit together and reflect as the midpoint in their labyrinth journey. Finally, the whole design was laid out in white chalk. 
The future flower bed areas were dug out and the red soil placed on top of the pathway areas. Gradually the labyrinth assumed a three-dimensional quality. Pipes were placed where a watering system would be installed underground to nurture the flowers. Bricks were then needed to line the borders between the paths and flower beds to keep them separate. The right technique to lay them correctly had to be worked out. This was rather tedious work, which had to be done very carefully and precisely to level the bricks and make the smooth curves to keep the correct design. Four trees were transplanted from the earlier location in the gardens and placed here correctly. Lots of bricks, all placed in the ground so that only their tops would be seen. The deep center sitting pit was lined with brick and it was topped with red sandstone brought in, then tiles and special pebbles were embedded in a cemented circle. The red soil on the paths had to be high enough and stabilized so that after heavy rains the paths would not be flooded, ending up with deep mud. It turned out to be a much larger and prolonged project than anyone had anticipated. Each of the rows between the pathways would be demarcated by a low hedge of various flowering plants which would guide people into the central space with a sunken sitting place. Then began the laying of pipes for an underground sprinkler system, a slow drip type irrigation for the low flowering hedge. And the plants began to be put in. Little celebrations by the labyrinth team were in order from time to time. Here we can see the water piping is in place. Then granite boulders were brought in and were placed for decorative effects in special areas here and there. Finally, after the labyrinth green hedge was planted, it was time to inaugurate the labyrinth. And many people were invited and many came. Speeches made. and everyone walked the labyrinth. Before you begin, stand or sit at the entrance and prepare yourself by clearing your mind of all expectations. Reflect on any concerns that you may be bringing with you. Pay attention to your breathing and to your body. As you need, stop, rest, meditate. Find your own pace silently. Feel free to gently pass or to let another person pass you on the path. Often an ancient Christian method is used, the threefold path of prayer, consisting of three stages. First, releasing or purgation. 
pray for release as you journey in toward the center. I let go and I let God. Second is receiving or illumination. Pray for opening to inside and new awareness as you near the center or sit or stand there. The center can symbolize the evolutionary process of spirit coming into matter. Stay as long as you are called to be in the center, seeking illumination quietly, perhaps playing music. And third or last is returning or union. On the return path, pray for integration of what you received. Take the silence and peace and insight with you and pray that the Spirit's guidance be manifested in your life. Thy will be done. I recommend the Labyrinth Meditation by the Reverend Lauren Artris of the Grace Episcopal Church in San Francisco, which you can find in a few pictures after the presentation is finished. But just music now. Each time you walk the labyrinth, you become more empowered to find and do the work you feel your soul reaching for. We're really in a cosmic dance, Reverend Archer says. We're all on this planet together. We're all walking the path together whether we know it or not. A cosmic dance together. And from the Hebrew Bible, the book of Isaiah. Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more. Your eyes shall see your teacher. And when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. <laughs> 